So that was the first step about the seed quality. So now we are moving into a building program. How do we advance from here in the light of all these issues that, you know, where we, we, we're moving into? Because what we need now is to make sure that we deliver a new cultivars to industry. You know, the issue of the climate change and other what are called factors that they affect the uh, production of the groundnut. There's a lot of them. And so I will share with you what we are planning to do. In this case, you know, because a uh, reading program at ARC is the oldest uh, reading program. And we know that it took some shock because before my time, there was someone and there was a time frame that where there was no breeder. But now is the time that we fix and we catch up and we do things the right way as we move forward. And also, I'll share with you what you know, is our strategy regarding to a national cultivar trials, because we plant what we call trials all over with the objective of selecting the best performing variety per location or an area. So the outline of the talk will be you know, the introduction and the groundnut product profiles efforts to speed up the genetic gain, sources of the germplasm and the breeding pipelines and product you know, advancement processes, national cultivar trials and the way forward. So to just give a background about the PINAS and when I look at the information on public domain, there's a clear indication that actually the production of PINAS had went down over the past decades or so and one of the reasons is that of the low yield, because when I talk to my yeah, clients, which is the farmers, they always alluded to the uh, yield is lower. And definitely what I call a maize, as the yield of maize is going up, people, the farmers will prefer to plant maize on the large scale. And also looking at farmers in irrigation areas like Falhas and other places that last, they are moving into what I call a picking us industry because of the low yield and some other crops as alternative. And one of the, the causes of this low uh, production is a long growing season because some of the variety that we still have in our pipeline or the breeding program, they have a long maturity period. And it's a penalty for the farmers and also for us because someone wants someone that a sort of crop that he can see a return on investment within a short space of time. And most importantly, diseases, because diseases, they are also where the farmer they spend a lot of fortune on money on what called spraying their field. And in South Africa, at the moment, the peanuts is mostly used in the process like the peanut butter and confectionery when you eat nice chocolate from PepsiCo and others, what called role players, they, you know, they coat the peanuts. And also the, the big market in South Africa that peanuts it has been you know, exported to countries like Japan, Netherlands, Germany, and Mozambique, and other places. And most of these cultivars that are in the market today, they have been, as I said, bred by an ARC. And previously, this breeding program was funded by Oil and Protein Seed Development Trust. And we hope that we can revive that World Color Trust and we can get uh, some funding. So to just give you a background about the yeah, what I call groundnut product profile in South Africa, uh, the profile that we are looking at is early maturity of about you know, 120 days from planting to you know, harvesting, medium maturity of approximately you know, 150, and speciality, what I call groundnut. So in each line, at the moment, we don't really have this the one that actually that serve the market. And it's what the, our growers, they are looking for. And having said that, all this cultivar, the trade that when we, we deliver the cultivar must have, it must be a high yield, must have a 10, 10 what we call skin color, and the, the kernels must be round and have a, some this is what color resistant. I just mentioned some of the, the major one here, a leaf spot, web blot, and a sclerotinia. And a sclerotinia is the one right here at the bottom, at the corner, where it's also becoming a new issue now. And for 
Also for one color speciality, I mean that all this cultivar must be one color Spanish because if we have a Virginia or the Rana imported from overseas or whatever, when they, you bring them here, they have a long growing period and as a result, the crop does not reach maturity and you lost the crop. So we try to focus mostly in our breeding program on the Spanish types. And for this, what I call a speciality, I mean, must be have high yield and high oleg, because oleg show is associated with the nutritious value of the crop and also the ship life, so the shelf life, because if you have to send the peanuts to you know, overseas and spend months on the ship, it must maintain quality. And also what we like to have in our breeding program, this what we call good to have. And nematodes is a one of the big issue, as well under irrigation. I think Dr. Sonia, she will talk a lot. So now we try to work together on getting some gemplasm for what we call resistant. And that also will tie my work and also with Dr. Rene Prince, where she's gonna you know, assist that with the genotyping to look at the genes for resistant. And also I just put this one color trait because I noticed some of the guys overseas, they talk a lot about what we call blanchability, as well for people in the processing space making bean butter, because you don't want your bean butter to have a cultivar which have like this, because otherwise it will turn off the consumers, and this is a medium blanchability. We want something like this, but this is an issue that I would like industry to advise us if it's necessary for us to start to breed for this trade. And how do we move forward? How do we take all what I've said in terms of whatever? So we, in the breeding, a breeding is a continual genetic improvement. You don't just breed today, now you stop. It's something that the new cultivars must match the climate change and some of the issues that are happening you know, around the world. Also it influences um, you know, the issue of market because if now, someone in Japan say, no, I don't want the round kernel on anymore, I want this. So we must always be you know, alert. And so it never ends, it's a long journey. So how do we define a, a success of the breeder? We say, oh sorry, uh, this equation, you know, so I'll just explain it, that uh, what's called a genetic gain per period of time. We want to improve a genetic gain, whether in terms of, in our case, it will be mostly a yield. And when you breed, that trait must be uh, heritable because if a trait is not inherited in the progeny, you can't really do a breeding. And selection, what I call intensity, when we do selection, we don't just only look at the plant's nice phenotype, we are also concerned about a grading that's have a nice round shape, ten, and other stuff. And also, to make a success, we need a genetic variation. As Dr. Prince said, uh, peanuts sometimes tend to have a narrow, actually have a narrow genetic base. So how do we improve an ARC existing germplasm to get it better? And this must be achieved within short space of time, the time frame. So what we planning to do is to in, increase the rate of genetic gain in our breeding program. And so we'll be assessing this with the help of this at last house. This is my colleague when we do uh, uh, crosses, and so we're hoping that we can do put generation in one year, one in the glass house, one in the field, so we can do a first F1 in the glass house and go straight into F2 during the summer growing period within short space of time. So having this glass house is going to really help a lot. And also we want to use a molecular marker to improve efficiencies. As Dr. Renan Prince, she mentioned about the uh, a high oleg, so we are planning to work close with her to start to help us to speed up our uh, processes, make sure that the line that we are chasing, they have a trait of interest. So this is just an example of mark assistant selection that we have done with the Dr. Rene Prince on a uh, high oleg. Uh, in this case, we know that the uh, uh, what called a GG in this case is a, an allele that is associated with non oleg or normal penis with a low protein content. 
and AA is a gene that is associated with a, what call, they call a mutant, is a recessive, which indication of high or leg. But when you have a seed on its own, you cannot know which one have a high or leg here. And the only way to find out is to do what called genotyping, what Dr. Prince, she was saying. So this is one of the way of how we're gonna complement our traditional reading program in the class house in the field with her, her work. So one other aspect is to, now we have this narrow genetic base because most of the, the cultivars at ARC, they've been developed from only few of the cultivars. So we, we work with other people from overseas. We managed to secure some gem plasm from the University of Georgia and also an ICRISAT. Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, we got about you know, 118 you know, accession from ICRISAT. And these guys, they are in Senegal, what we call a CIRAT. We got a what we call a 14 you know, accession. At the moment, we are engaging also University of North Carolina State University in the US. They work closely with the Department of you know, Agriculture in the US. So we're hoping to get more of the what we call a Spanish type. And these lines will be evaluate them in the field. And the one which have a what we call a trait of interest will send a sample to Dr. What call Rene Print to test at our color traits, like what called sclerotinia and the nematodes. But that also, you knows I'll be working together with Dr. What called Sonia Stienkamp, our nematologist here. So to just give you about the background of the reading pipelines, what we do at the moment, as I said, once you have all those pemplasm, we evaluate them in the field. This year, I want to make a point that we'll be evaluating them in the field and so put screen for different what color traits. And so yeah, with the help of our nematologists and also plant pathologists, which is not here. So we'll be working as a team to make sure we select the best lines with a, a trait of interest and we'll be sharing with Sengen for genotyping to move forward. So in the in our what call uh, reading pipelines, first stage we have a back cross reading which is happening under the class house. Here, as I said, that ALC, we have a germplasm that they are well adapted, but the, the genetic base is quite narrow. So we want to improve certain traits, might be a disease resistant or the yield. So we will have this an F1 that we created under the glass house. For the back crossing, also we'll be doing in the, under the glass house, but with the intervention of the RNA and with molecular markers, we'll be able to work or speed up this process. So that is where we find ourselves, we can make a much what called gain of the genetic gain. But I want to tell you that actually this is kind of like a defensive uh, reading method because you don't get much of the genetic variation when you do introgression. And when we sell them many times to get back cross F4, this will be subjected straight into what called, you know, a preliminary yield, what called trials. So other reading in the pipeline is a a usual one, which an ARC they've been using, is a pedigree. This one is a you know, aggressive method because we plant materials in the, what call it, in the field and F2s, and we keep on selecting the best one based on a phenotype. The one that they are growing better and they are showing some disease resistant and better yield, we take them forward. And until it takes some time to get there, but this is how we can maintain and improve our genetic gain. And at yes, seven from the initial cross is where we got to an F sixes. We hope here the land will be mostly what call a homozygous. But one thing which I just what call forget to make at F one stage, we'll be sending the sample to Rene Prince to do what call fingerprinting. You see a flower when you do what call a cross. In a peanut, it's very difficult to get a, actually a true a hybrid because the flower is quite smaller. It's difficult to do what color, so you need magnified their glasses and so on. So to make sure the line that we take them forward, they are a true a hybrid, we'll be working with our collaborator to validate that. And even at F6, we're also gonna start to apply molecular markers where she's gonna assist us to to see if there's still some uh, heterozygous, what called residuals in the background, so we can advise 
how many generations we still have to do to maintain homozygosity. So that is where we have an, you know, F7 we bulk before we, we do multi-location trials. So now we move from another phase because the breeding will go preferring stages. What we call a stage gate through that advancement from this F7, what's the next step now? The next step will be we planting elite one, we call it elite one, the first what we call preliminary what we call trials that are coming from you know, you know, our an F7. So what we have at the moment, we have a line that they will be bred using pedigree method and some of the line they use uh, per cross and we are lucky to get some of the line from Equisat. So this we call it introduction line. So we also now take them into a first uh, what we call a uh, Elite one, what we call it, trials, and so we'll be planting in at least what we call it, real localities, four rows of the three reps, and some of them they will actually what we call it, trial will be under irrigation, and some of them will be under the dry land, and while other one also will be spray and you know, unspray to just see how actually how they perform and what the disease what we call respond. And also we'll be using anel, our purest one, and the high yielding anel and cell blast as a checks. At this phase, we'll be screening for yield, disease resistant, most importantly, quality, which is influenced by the uh, grading. And for this year also, we have a new lines that we advanced what we call uh, last year into you know, early two for this year. So these lines now will be planted in four localities four rows, three replications, under irrigation and what we call a dry land, all what we call a spray. And here we'll be again looking at the yield and quality because these are the major what we call a factor that industry is looking for. And moving forward, we'll take the one from elite two, we move them into you know, elite three. So we're gonna rep what we call repeat the same method, but here, once we identify the best line that were consistent over yes, so we prepare them for a release and a registration, then we can serve that to the industry. So this is just an example of the Elite One trial that we planted in the previous season, where we found that actually uh, this trial that they were planted in Falhas and Stahole, the dry land and under irrigation, and we found that actually there's a potential line that it might be coming here, and PC500 A12, it shows actually what we call a stability in terms of yield against our checks, which is last year we used Aqua and Celeblast. But it looks like this new line might be one of our new cultivars in the market in future. But now we have to what we call intensify you know, how we will plant it, our, you know, our trials, and how we're going to manage it. So eventually, that is what we want. You know, that we can tell the farmer that if you spray under irrigation, most likely for this cultivar, you get a five ton per hectare. But it's a still a long journey. So I just want to share with you what we already achieved at the moment, moving forward. So for additional cultivar trials, we planted them in uh, seven localities using mountain accession. These they were the cultivars and some of the uh, breeding lines. And two of the breeding lines here, which we planted, we sent them for the registration for the cultivars. So we might have a new cultivars in the next year or so in the market. And the grading for this one color trials, it was done, but now we are still busy with a data you know, analysis for this cultivar. I mean, for this one color trial. So moving forward regarding the national uh, breeding program, getting all this cultivar from different places. So we're gonna phenotype them, we're gonna plant them, in our uh, breeding what we call blocks. We're gonna walk in, in this field to look at the traits that we are looking for. And it will be what we call screening this germplasm using molecular markers with Dr. Uh, uh, Rene Prince. And also with the you know, advancement of uh, what we call you know, inputs for the traits that have not been what we call reported, or we don't know where they are located in terms of genetics. We're gonna generate mapping populations, where I think uh, you know an expert of yeah, the Prince and other people they're gonna help us for the what we call genotyping. By doing this, we'll be able to 
to develop our own markers, you know, especially for yield, because the yield is influenced by environment and many places, and also maturity, because the line that is doing well in Uganda at 120 days, when we bring to South Africa, in my metro at 160, because of you know, altitude and some other factors. So we're hoping doing this in-house ourselves can help to speed up our uh, building program. But we're only going to be focused on most economic local trades. And also we'll be uh, you know, applying this you know, healthy control to make sure that uh, our seat is of good quality and is purer. And we want to also, as we move forward, align an ARC uh, creating with the industry because it seems like there's a slight discrepancies between what industry they are doing, but that is not a big issue. But I think we need to align so we, got, we can be able to compare our data versus industry and we can advance our line. And also, as I said, we want to what call strengthen our partnership with the industry as we move forward. And for the national health trials, we, we learned that actually what the issue is that, how do we optimize our yield? Because one of the issues is not only about selecting the best health trials per locality, but we need to start to improve our you know, agronomic practices that we produce a yield. And one of the what we call a strategy for this year as we move forward, we want to improve populations because Maybe when we plant them in other what called spacing, as I said, and ARC and other variety from other what call uh, industry, maybe when we use different, so we can identify the best what call uh, population or the number of seed that you need to achieve certain amount of the yield. But uh, so we hope this year we we need to focus or change our. Uh, evaluation of the cultivars, what called slightly, start to do you know, agronomic what called research to optimize the yield of our cultivars. And also make sure we we'll use a pure seed as one of the strategies as we move forward that we want to deliver a pure seed to industry. So we want to clean ourselves, our house, by make sure that we have a pure seed. So that is in my uh, what called site. And I just like to thank the following people for you know support whenever we need them. And thanks so much for listening. I think I'm done with my story. Mm -hmm.